Following 9-11, there has been a desire by the public for more information from Muslims about Islam. How has this affected Muslim identity? Um, you know, the complicated thing uh, that happened with the community when 9-11 hit was that we ne not, were not very sophisticated at that time in terms of organizing, media strategy, um, doing a lot of public speaking. We didn't, we had to suddenly really jump to the forefront and, um, and answer questions that a lot of people were not necessarily prepared for. So what happened was you had people who were either students, or they were local leaders, maybe even um, I call them uncles and aunts at the local mosque, who suddenly now had to be uh, in the limelight, whether it was on the camera, whether uh, on, on TV, whether it was in front of audiences, answering a whole spectrum of questions. So you could have somebody like me, a Muslim who is a Pakistani American Muslim, might be expected to answer questions on Sharia, on the place of women in Islam, on Islamic history, on jihad, on Iraq, on Afghanistan and the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. I mean, you know, you can take that to its uh, conclusion as far uh, back as you want to go. Um, and it, it created the rise of something almost, you know, I would call as a professional Muslim. So you have almost a whole genre of, of activists who became professional Muslims because over and over and over again they were called to respond on every single issue about Islam. So whether um, in the public discourse there were questions on uh, an act of terrorism, um, and maybe a woman had been hurt, you know, a, 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 ca a case that's well known, like, you know, uh, in Nigeria, for example, we know there's been cases of, like, you know, Sharia law in which uh, people have been, um, condemned to die for that. But you know, so as a professional Muslim, you have to answer for all of these things. Uh, number one, that signaled a lack of understanding from the Western public about the diversity, the, the incredible diversity of Muslims, the diversity of their experiences and their histories, because they expected one person to be able to answer for everything. The second thing it did was it uh, really pigeonholed us. So in, in I couldn't for example, somebody like me, who's been an activist advocate for more than 10 years, uh, I rarely got the opportunity to talk about myself as a human being and, and my personal experience, about my family, about uh, what it was like to be raised in the United States, what, it's, you know, what does my identity mean to me. Instead, I was constantly on the defensive and answering questions about Islam. Uh, so Muslims have, uh, professional Muslims, I'll say, um, often lose the chance to tell their personal stories and to tell stories that actually would resonate with non-Muslims better than the, the uh, kind of the sound bites they have to offer every single time. How can one reclaim personal identity and community identity when it comes to being a Muslim? I think um, it's one of those things where um, the lack of understanding of the diversity, you know, forces us to respond over and over to the same ideas and narratives and that's only going to be corrected when we independently tell our story. So if you, if you engage the public with stories that are not responding to them directly and say, hey listen, I have something else to tell you about myself. I have something else to tell you about my community, about the history of our community. Um, that will then generate new questions from people. Like people are going to be seeing your community in an entire different, different light and it'll raise different questions for them. So th I think that's going to take some time. I think a mistake that we've made as uh, American Muslims, and it comes from really a defensive posture, is always leading with Islam because we feel like our, our faith is under attack. So we say, no, but Islam says this. This is what Islam tells me to do as a Muslim. Um, and we, our story, even our stories that we try to tell, we put Islam first instead of putting ourselves first in human beings. So I think once we learn the lesson of how to really tell compelling stories uh, and not putting your faith front and center, that's always going to be there with you. Um, and maybe that comes from a defensive uh, you know, standpoint too, but uh, I think that will naturally over time generate um, the kinds of questions and curiosities and understanding of the diversity of Muslims and uh, hopefully we won't need professional Muslims anymore <laughs> after that.